More than 120 miles southwest of Albuquerque, in the remote desert of central New Mexico, state highway worker Raymond Gabaldon drove westbound on Highway 60. This two-lane stretch of asphalt cuts across flat, arid land interrupted by occasional rolling hills. While the land is rugged and arid, juniper and pinyon trees decorate the russet landscape like scattered jacks on an old hardwood floor. It was just after 10.30 on Friday morning, September 10, 1999. The skies were mostly sunny, although it had rained overnight. Gabaldone, 39, had set out to do the weekly job of picking up trash at local rest areas. Someone else had performed the trash pickup duty the last two weeks, so the job hardly seemed bothersome to Gabaldone as he drove toward one of the more popular rest stops in the area, about eight miles west of the small town of Magdalena. As Gabaldone's state vehicle climbed the steep hill that rises west of Magdalena, he was only a few hundred yards from the rest area, when something suddenly caught his eye. It would have been hard to miss, actually. On the south side of the highway, the land immediately rises up a steep slope. About 20 feet up that embankment was the gray-colored object that caught Gabaldone's attention. A blanket? he wondered. Whatever it was, it could be dangerous when the desert winds picked up destined to blast along the flatland. And with cars, RVs, and semis going up and down the hill, a wind-whipped blanket could be hazardous. Raymond Gabaldone pulled over to pick it up. It looked more like a tarp, he thought, as he walked up to it, and in good condition. Why would someone throw it away? As Gabaldone inspected the tarpaulin, he noticed dark red stains on it. Dried blood. At first he wasn't alarmed. It looked like one of those that you use for wrapping a deer after you hunt it, he said later. It was, after all, hunting season. In fact, a local hunting contest was underway. The Magdalena area attracts a lot of deer, elk, mountain lion, and bear hunters from throughout New Mexico, as well as Texas and other states. A hunter might pay $8,000 to kill an elk on someone's private land. Hunting is big business here. The area's small hotels, restaurants, and stores depend on it. While holding the tarpaulin in his hands, Gabaldone discovered something that disturbed him. Hair. Long, dark strands of it. And just a few feet away, twisted clumps of duct tape. One piece had similar strands of hair stuck to it. Another piece of gray tape was twisted into a distinctive shape. A figure eight. Alone in the desert, Gabaldone's eyes surveyed the landscape around him but he needed to look only a little less than 20 feet away. At the bottom of the slope he had just climbed, right along the edge of Highway 60, he saw clothing. A small girl's top, shorts, underwear. It didn't look right, Gabaldone later told police. What really didn't look right were the blood stains, not only on the tarp, but dried blood appeared on the blouse and panties, too. Gabaldone tried to imagine how the tarp and clothing ended up alongside this stretch of Highway 60. The winds had been light overnight and were relatively calm now. It didn't seem as if the tarp and clothing could have all been blown here from some other location. Besides, the rain from the night before weighed a bit heavy on the tarp. It would have been difficult for the night winds to push it anywhere. No, it looked as if it had all been dumped here. Fearing the worst, Gabaldone's gut instinct told him where he had to look next. He knew the area well. And if someone wanted to hide a body nearby, the culvert, about 200 yards east of here, would be a logical place to do so. Gabaldone stepped into the sandy arroyo several feet below the south side of Highway 60. From there, he could clearly see the pipe that passes under the highway. Beneath the blue September sky, all seemed calm at this moment. Only the singing of nearby birds, occasionally drowned out by vehicles passing overhead, interrupted the tranquility. But many times, Gabaldon had seen an entirely different picture here. Mm-hmm.